Yo dudes, what's up? This is Jay Barn. In this video, I'm going to show you how to program your MPD-226 so that it'll play scales for you. Yeah, it's as cool as it sounds. I hope you guys enjoy this. Later. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is you need the actual editor in order to do this and to download it. I left the link, but the link's going to take you here and it's, you know, it looks like they want you to buy the thing. You're going to click on downloads and choose your operating system and you want the editor so pick Windows or Mac and what you'll end up getting is this the editor so let me just start a new document here and this is the generic preset I recommend maybe using this one you can choose so when you download this I also um, got a folder that went to my music and then it was MPC, and then you get these factory presets. Live Light, even though I use this mainly with Logic, is my favorite because Logic has a bunch of um, just weird macros set up. It's, it's, I would recommend going with the generic one, actually. The generic one, these control, these CCs down here are toggle CCs, which I kind of like, meaning they act like buttons. And then these are already set up for CCs, so that's gonna give you your sliding in this case they're faders, but even knobs are gonna give you that controlling instead of it just being on and off. And then here's how you do it. So I didn't know this at first, but dude, this is the coolest thing ever. So you go up to tools and you go to auto populate tool. And what you're gonna do is it gives you this kind of setup. Unfortunately, I can't make these smaller and my screen real estate is pretty low, but this is enough to see what's going on. So now what you can do is you can choose what the pads, knobs, faders, and switches do, but what I've been using this mainly for is applying colors and scales to my pads. So, for instance, I will click on scale, and I want it to be, and then you could pick out of, like if you're really good with uh, music theory, you know what all these other scales do. Let's say I want to do E minor. Right, so I'll pick minor, and then I have to pick where I want this to start. So I notice that uh, the zeros are kind of where I usually like to start the scales. Sometimes if I have a sound that needs to go a little deeper, you might want to start with the negative ones. But let's say we want E0 to be this note, so I'd pick E0. What I'll do then is pick the colors I want. So let's say, I don't know, I kind of like the, uh, the hot pink and aqua combo. It looks kind of cool, I guess. And then you just choose what bank you want to apply it to. So I'll apply it to bank A. When I hit OK, you can see immediately all the notes have changed, but not the colors. Why not? Well, that's because you have to tell it that you want whatever you want it to change, you have to put the check mark on. So now if I apply it, you can see all my colors have changed. Let's say I want to go with uh, orange and blue. So I could make my on color, we'll make the on color blue and the off color orange. If I hit apply, there it is. So you can do any colors you want and it changes them all. And if you don't want them to change, then you just don't auto-populate them. You can leave them uh, like the rainbow colors. Okay, so that's only one bank though. So if I click on bank B, you're going to see it's the same as it was. So what you have to do is you have to click off bank A, click on bank B, and then what I usually do is if you notice on bank A, this ends at F sharp 2, and E2 is just under it. So what I do is I start my next scale on E2 because then... I get all the notes all the way up. You'll see how far it goes. It goes all up to like E8 or something like that. So on B, I'm just going to see if this works. I want to make sure that B is highlighted and not A. If I have both A and B highlighted, it's going to apply this to both A and B pad banks. And I don't want that. I want it to scale up through my pad banks. So I'm going to go to E2 because that's where I want to pick up on this one. So we'll pick E2. And this is the note value, 40. I'll stay with blue and orange. And actually, you don't even have to do that. Maybe we'll do red and blue. Then I just hit apply and boom, there they go. And it shows you your pad colors. You can see my notes have been affected. Same thing for C. So now I'm gonna go up to E4 because if you notice, E4 is kind of my highest E note here. I want all my scales to start on an E and then run through. Um, so click B off, click C on, hit apply, and then if I click over to C, you'll see I've applied those notes. And last but not least, let's change our D out. And there's E6, I want it minor, blah, blah, blah. And then we'll make the color, I'm just picking randoms here. So we'll go pink and light green, sure, why not? Click C off, click D on apply and boom there you go so now this is set up the only other thing I would do is I would name this 
here I would call this E minor. You could even put one of these little underscores in. And this will display on your MPD controller so you know what scale you're, you're dealing with. You're gonna bring this in as a preset. So the first thing we need to do is go, whoops, get rid of this. Uh, we need to go File, Save As. I'm gonna call this E minor. This is saving with my factory presets. I don't really want that, so I'm gonna back out a layer. But I'll make a new folder and I'm just gonna call this folder demo because I don't wanna confuse my other E minor if I have one. And hit save, and so now I have to get this thing into the MPD. So anyway, I have this saved. I've renamed it here because I wanna make sure that my preset is appearing when I bring this in to my actual controller. Let's pause here. Let me go get the controller and um, We'll pick it up from there. All right, guys, so once you have this set up, I renamed it to E minor, I've got my scales in, I've changed my colors, I've verified everything's cool. What you wanna do is you wanna get it from the computer into the hardware, okay? So you can't see this screen because uh, the exposure's blown out, but it says preset number four, twist two. That's one of the defaults. I'm never gonna use that. So I'm gonna replace that one with this E minor. So I'm just gonna get rid of this number four, you click on it to select the one you want to replace. And then, actually, you don't even have to do that step first because what you'll see is I'm going to go File, Send to Hardware, and then I pick the preset I want. You can see I've got four selected. I want to replace my preset number four with this. I'm going to hit Send. You can see the buttons flashed. It's also giving me this error where it says Verify the MIDI input settings. But if I just click OK, and if I go on and off with this, you can see it actually went. So even though you get the error message on the computer over here, you can see... You can see that it actually went. So I have my, whoops, let me minimize this, get rid of this. So you can see I've got Monarch open in Logic. And the nice thing about Monarch is you right click and go MIDI oscillator learn. And if I turn this, you can see my cutoff is now being controlled by this macro, which is awesome. So do the same with my resonance, right click, MIDI learn. And so now I got. Now, this is all in E minor. Whoops. There you go, E minor. That's the idea. So now it's tuned up. Um, I hope this was helpful, guys, and I will see you in the next video later. Hey guys, a couple things. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm gonna try to make some presets available on my website. I haven't figured out how to do it, but if I do, I'm gonna add it to the description down below. This is Jay Barr, and that was how to populate your MPD-226 with scales, and it's pretty dope. Later. <laughs>